Welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we're discussing issues that I've personally wrestled with with regard to the faith, and today an issue that's been raised based on a single verse of the Bible ever since I was a kid. Is it always bad to call someone foolish? First, the verse that this issue comes from. But I say to you that whosoever is angry with his brother shall be in danger of the judgment, and whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council, and whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Matthew 5.22 Almost nobody says Raka anymore, but that last one is troubling. In the modern world, most people who deal with this verse just interpret it to mean that no matter how mistaken a person may be, you should never call them a fool or judge them, but taking the last part of this verse in that literal way would also mean that God would be in danger of hellfire, since the Bible also says, But God said to him, Thou fool, this night do they require thy soul of thee, and who shall those things be which thou hast provided? Luke 12.20 However, it's not just this one verse that creates problems for the popular interpretation of Matthew 5.22. Calling people fools is a major theme of the Old Testament. The book of Proverbs is absolutely full of the word fool, used to describe unsound decision-making. And Psalm 13 in the Dewey Rames Bible says that those who deny the existence of God in their hearts are fools. Surely, the person who wrote this psalm isn't in danger of hellfire for saying this, right? Clearly, the literal interpretation of this part of the verse isn't the correct one, then. So there must be some other interpretation pointed to by the verse. Perhaps there's a hidden assumption that people are making in interpreting this verse. This was a mystery to me for a long time until I looked through the book called Catina Aurea, or Golden Chain, a collection by St. Thomas Aquinas of biblical commentaries written by dozens of saints and fathers of the church, and in referring to this verse, it offers the following insight. He who is angry without cause shall be judged. But he who is angry with cause shall not be judged. For if there were no anger, neither teaching would profit, nor judgments hold, nor crimes be controlled. So that he who on just cause is not angry is in sin. For an unreasonable patience sows vices, breeds carelessness, and invites the good as well as the bad to do evil. In short, if we don't get angry over evil things, we're only encouraging people to do more evil. It also reveals... But I think that Christ does not speak of anger of the flesh, but anger of the heart. For the flesh cannot be so disciplined as not to feel the passion. But when a man is angry, but refrains from doing what his anger prompts him, his flesh is angry, but his heart is free from anger. In other words, impulses of anger aren't judged, only malicious actions taken deliberately out of anger. Finally, as to the point about calling someone a fool, observe that he says, brother. For who is our brother but he who has the same father as ourselves? The same father as ourselves? Could he mean, but as none is empty who has the Holy Spirit, so none is a fool who has the knowledge of Christ? Here we go. He's referring to believers, those who've been baptized. The source of the typical confusion over this verse comes from the unspoken assumption which many people make today, that all people are brothers and sisters, or at least that Jesus is referring to everyone when he uses the term. However, there is no evidence whatsoever that Jesus meant the word brother in this way. Instead, there are good reasons to think the word brother used in this verse means a fellow baptized Christian. Jesus isn't talking about antagonistic atheists or pagans. He's talking about the people who believe in him and are genuinely trying to obey at least some of his commandments. Christians, of course, still require help and guidance from time to time, but we should never go so far as to call them fools so long as they still believe in Jesus and are trying to do his will. However, no other verse in the Bible that calls someone a fool overtly does so of a Christian. So this seems to be the interpretation of this verse that holds up best, being supported by the Bible, by the traditions of the church, and by ordinary common sense. Next. How many of our secrets will be revealed in heaven? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.